Distinguished guests, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Sabiha Isak, and I am the chairperson of the Global Respiratory Infection Partnership. I'm a South African research chair in antibiotic resistance and one health at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in Durban, South Africa. Welcome to this regional workshop to develop the Western Pacific Roadmap for AMR Action by Pharmacy. I'm honored to share this platform with John Bell and Neolola Ocampo. A few words of introduction. John is the principal advisor to the Pharmaceutical Society of, uh, of, of Australia in the Pharmacy Self-Care Program and practitioner and teacher in primary health care at the Graduate School of Health, University of Technology in Sydney. He has extensive experience from former roles as president of the Pharmaceutical Society of Australia, the Australian College of Pharmacy Practice, the Commonwealth Pharmaceutical Association, and is a former vice president of FIP. Leonola Ocampo is a pharmacist who has experience in the many different areas of pharmacy practice, such as patient care settings, academia, research, regulation, and policy, as well as public health administration and management. She is currently a member of the Executive Board of the Western Pacific Pharmaceutical Forum, a member of the Executive Committee of the FIP Community Pharmacy Sector, and President of the Asia Pacific Institute for Medication Management. I will begin with an overview of the workshop objectives. This is the agenda for today. John Alianola will then facilitate an interactive session to develop the Western Pacific Roadmap for AMR Action by Pharmacy, and I will end the workshop with an overview of the next steps. <clears throat> this regional workshop builds on the global session we held on September 12th last Saturday, the recording of which is available on the FIP website together with other webcasts and videos. And just to note that today's recording will also be available uh, on the FIP website for those that have missed this session. The objective of the regional workshop is to work together to drive regional initiatives in AMR by translating policy into action. During this workshop, we will co-develop and make a commitment to a regional roadmap for AMR success in pharmacy. GRIP is honored to partner with the International Pharmacy Federation to drive AMR action in the new decade by pharmacy. So let's answer the question, why pharmacists? To answer this, I want to draw on the pentagonal framework of the Global Respiratory Infection Partnership. This workshop speaks to the role of pharmacy, policy, prescribers, of, uh, and patients on the prevention of antimicrobial resistance. So let us go through each one of these five Ps. The first is policy where we will, uh, which, which, which is policy endorsed by local governments and clinical communities of practice that advance antibiotic stewardship and conservation. The second is patient empowerment and education about the appropriate antibiotic use and asymptomatic treatment. The third is pharmacy, guidance on the stewardship role of, as educators, providing patients with advice and support on infection management and when to consult a doctor. The fourth relates to prescriber guidance on antibiotic stewardship and effective dialogue with patients. And the final one is prevention of resistance by the rational use of antibiotics. Now pharmacists are pivotal in this framework because pharmacists validate or confirm prescribing practice and thus have tacit oversight of prescribers. They are strategically placed to educate patients and effect behavior change in terms of patient demand for antibiotics. They are critical to the implementation of policy, as well as generation of evidence to inform policy-related interventions, and they prevent antibiotic resistance by impacting on prescribing practice, patient behavior, and policy implementation. You will recall from the roadmap on the 12th that we decided to focus on three of the five strategic objectives of the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial res uh, Resistance that resonate most with the policy and practice roles of the pharmacist. These are improving awareness and understanding of AMR through effective communication, education, and training, reduce the incidence of infection through effective sanitation, hygiene, and infection prevention and control, and then optimize the use of antimicrobial medicines. We also wanted to incorporate the COMB model 
because we believe that the pharmacist has immense capability, opportunity, and motivation to address, uh, prevent, contain, and mitigate AMR. Pharmacists have the capability to address AMR because they have the knowledge, skills, abilities, or proficiencies acquired by education and practice. They have the opportunity to achieve this by leveraging country commitment to the UN Declaration and the Pharmacy Association's commitment to FIP policy statement on AMR. And they, are, um, they, and they have the motivation to prevent uh, antimicrobial resistance um, as a global public health threat. Sorry, I swapped the, the content there. So regional initiatives can address either education policy or public health in any of the three strategic objectives of the Global Action Plan. So it's now time for questions and we begin our interactive session. So the first question that we're going to put up now is has your country approved a national action plan for antimicrobial resistance? Please answer yes, no, or I don't know. Please go ahead. for answers and the results should be coming up anytime now. So in the Western Pacific region, 69% of the participants answered yes, 3% answered no, and 28% answered that they didn't know. Let's get on to the next question. <clears throat> Is the role of pharmacy clearly defined in the plan? Please again answer yes, no, or I don't know, and we'll have about 20 to 30 seconds for your answers to be registered. Thank you. And 74% of you, many more than said that you knew that you had an action plan, said that the pharmacy role is clearly defined in the plan. 9% said no, and 17% said I don't know. So thank you very much for that. We will reanalyze re all of these results um, after, the, after the session. Thank you very much. So on to the next slide. We want to populate this slide with as many initiatives as possible after which we will determine time frames and, and responsible entities. I will now hand, and please I'd like you to remember that the three strategic objectives we are speaking to are awareness and education, uh, infection prevention and control, and the proper use of antimicrobial medicines. And each one of these initiatives could take the form of education, policy, or public health initiatives. It is now my pleasure to hand over to Leona and, and John. Thank you very much, Sabia. Um, well, I, I was really encouraged by those, uh, the answers to the questions that uh, Sabia has already posed, uh, that the vast majority of us in the, uh, in the Western Pacific region, which is 37 countries, um, a quarter of the world's population uh, are in our, our particular region. And uh, I might say of those countries, uh, 12 are associated with uh, the Western Pacific uh, pharmacy Forum, which is affiliated with FIP. So we need more of you to be in WPPF as well. But anyway, the, these, these survey insights, you, you would have realized, of course, I think most of you, I hope, I hope all of you would have responded to that survey. And these insights you see here are as a result of that survey. These are the global insights. Um, and Leone is going to take you through some of the specific um, regional insights in a minute or so. I'm, but sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt, John, but we can't hear you. We seem to have a connectivity issue. Uh, I've just got a message on the chat to say we can't hear John. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? 
I can hear you, John. Please continue. I can hear you. Now. Okay, we're yeah. good. We're good. We're good. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, that's good. So uh, to identify these insights, which are the, the, the global insights, um, uh, in, insofar as barriers were concerned, there were five specific bar barriers, and these are they. Education and training, it was seen as though um, the education was not sufficiently robust or significant in terms of uh, teaching about antimicrobial resistance uh, and stewardship. There were inadequate financial resources and support from organisations and institutions. Um, and there was no recognition or little collaboration um, amongst various groups in, in I guess, meeting uh, the action plan in terms of antimicrobial resistance. Um, there were a couple of others, and we'll just go on to those as well. Um, again, these are the global uh, barriers that were identified, uh, that accountability and leadership apparently was lacking. Um, how, how that would, uh, I, I guess, relate to your specific country or our region, we'll talk about in a little while. But regulation and surveillance was also something which was identified as a barrier. Uh, so not, not as significant or as sufficient surveillance about the regulations, not sufficient regulations and not enforced as well as they should have been. So Leone, you might like to take us through some of the specific examples that we got back from our region. Thank you very much, John. Uh, good morning, good noon, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Okay, so uh, to continue sharing the, the survey insights, we have one in the Philippines that says, there is lack of knowledge when it comes to choosing the best antibiotic and this is a barrier. Revenue margins are decreasing and many high level initiatives are competing for the increasingly scarce amount of money. Prescribing practices have to change. And Singapore said there are no local studies being conducted or published in Singapore. Another insight from the Philippines says social awareness, more lectures so that people would understand the use of antibiotics, and a campaign should be done as well. So there's a clamor of uh, improving awareness and educating our users of antibiotics. And uh, Australia, on the other hand, says we need to fund pharmacists for the EMR-related interventions, counseling, de-prescribing, suggesting alternatives to antibiotics. So we have a lot more uh, taken from uh, uh, more insights that uh, we saw in the survey, but these are just some that we are sharing to you. And on to the next slide. Okay. On to the next slide, slide, this slide shares to us the consolidation of some examples, example initiatives relative to the three strategic objectives that were lifted from the five strategic object objectives of the Global Action Plan. Three being those objectives that are most relevant to pharmacy. So on improving awareness, and understanding of antimicrobial resistance through effective communication, education, and training. These are some of the example initiatives that we have gathered to establish formal antimicrobial stewardship training and an undergraduate at, at the undergraduate level in all pharmacy schools. Another one is to have a regular and up-to-date postgraduate education in antimicrobial resistance to be offered by the professional organizations. And third, under that objective is to access 
to resource materials to enable trained community pharmacy staff to communicate EMR messages to patients and to health consumers. On the objective of improving uh, or of reducing the incidence of infection through effective sanitation, hygiene, and infection prevention measures, there is a, a, an in, input that we have gathered saying that community pharmacies should be made resource centers for infection control advice and pharmacists is to, uh, should administer vaccines for common infections and travel associated infections. On the third objective of optimizing the use of antimicrobial medicines, these were the, the initiatives shared. There has to be established, established and enforcement of regulations that would limit the availability of antimicrobials without prescription. Then limit the prescribing of, of, uh, of some categories of antimicrobials to certain infection control medical practitioners. Then encourage, I couldn't see this. Uh, the, uh, we, we need to encourage also uh, the the, the, the advice that has to be given to those who would be dispensing, uh, to patients for those who would be dispensing uh, when we dispense antimicrobial. So these are just some example initiatives that are identified. And there could be more that we may have in mind and we can recommend that as we go to uh, the, the, the generation of some comments and feedback of what else do we want or do you think should be done relative to this objective so we would be able to make this happen? Thanks, Leone. Look, th they were some of the initiatives that had been suggested from our region. And as Leone said, we'd, we'd love you to suggest even more initiatives. You, you've got that chat box there and particularly the, the q and icon. If, uh, if you would like to ask some questions as we go along, we'd, we'd do our very best to answer those during the time allocated. But if we can't do it in the time, we'll certainly get back to you, all of you, uh, with answers to your questions. But what we'd like to do now is with go through these particular suggested initiatives and ask you, with each one of these, when you think this particular initiative, this particular suggestion um, might be implemented. When, for instance, you could put this into practice in your country. Maybe you've already done it and that's fantastic. But firstly, uh, let's ask if we establish formal antimicrobial stewardship training at the undergraduate level in your country, when do you think that could be done? Next year, the year after, if you can click on when, when you think that could be appropriate and submit your answer in the next uh, 10 seconds or so, that would be great. And whilst we're waiting for that to come up, you can think about the next question in your mind. But uh, in, a, in a few seconds, we'll have the answer to that question when you think that this could be implemented where you are. I know that in, in, in some schools, I've got the message that it's already there. So it's not only next year, it's this year. But that's encouraging. And um, some people are looking a little bit further ahead. So that's fine. So on the next question then, regular and up-to-date postgraduate education in antimicrobial resistance, when do you think that might be achieved? Maybe already, that's fantastic. Or perhaps, next year at the very latest, I hope. Uh, but if not, within the next few years, do you think that could be achieved in your country where you're practicing? And in a second or two, we'll have the answers to that. We've got a team of administrators here working on these questions and answers. They're working away, they're pedaling away on their little bikes to make sure we get those answers quickly. Here they are. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good that nearly 70% think at least by next year, that's great. 
And the, the last question in this particular series, access to resource materials was something that we felt, well, in feedback, uh, that was so important. So could this initiative be implemented in your country and how soon? When can you get the resources that you need to help communicate the messages to your patients or health consumers? To enable you and your, your pharmacy staff to be well equipped to get that message through. Do you have that material now or when do you think you can have it? So I'll have that answer soon. Well, some people thinking that maybe they don't have it quite yet and they're looking forward to the next year or two for it to be available. Maybe Leone, you can take the next series of questions for us. Okay, thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. So uh, on the objective of reducing the incidence of infection through uh, effective communication, hygiene and infection prevention measures, so a uh, suggested initiative is to make our community pharmacies be a resource or the resource centers for infection control and uh, inf inf infection control advice and for our pharmacies to administer vaccines for common infections and travel associated infections. So the question here is when do you think can this initiative happen in your respective countries or is this already happening or can we make this happen as soon as possible time? Please uh, give your answers and submit it. Okay, wow. So we have many who would be able to do it in 2021, so that's just next year, and some in 2022. So this is very encouraging. So this could be one very good timeline for all of us to make this happen. We know from pronouncement of FIP that we already have 36 countries who the pharmacists are into vaccination already. Now in these countries where we have the regulation, the policies are in place. We will try to maximize, especially those countries in the Western Pacific region, maximize all pharmacies to offer these services to our patients and our clients. And for countries where these are not yet happening or not available yet, and there's still a struggle on how we could convince government to support pharmacies to do uh, vaccination, then we can very well share our experiences to those who have uh, already uh, this in place, then maybe share best practices and support and help our uh, fellow pharmacists in those uh, countries. So uh, this is, I would say, pharmacists definitely is in a very good position to uh, expand uh, vaccination to the community. We are scattered and are accessible, very readily accessible to the public. So we have to work that uh, this will happen. Uh, we know we can do it. FIP can do it. WPR countries can do it. And we pharmacists definitely can do it. Yes, Leone, I think you're right there. I think collaboration, uh within our countries with, with other health care professions, of course, but also internationally. And I think FIP and indeed GRIP can take a really a leading role in, in this uh, international collaboration. We can learn from each other. We've got a couple of, another, um, couple of other initiatives here uh, that we'd like you to consider. Um, firstly, to establish and enforce the regulations that maybe limit the availability of antimicrobials. How soon can that be done where you are in your country? Uh, maybe it's done already sufficiently. Uh, if not, do you think that's something that, that you individually or the organization that you represent, um, your national organization can argue or advocate to government, um, to the regulators that this could be done? Uh, I think it's absolutely essential. And I know some countries have that. Um, 
But again, that's something that I think uh, international bodies like uh, FIP, like CPA, that uh, the Commonwealth Pharmacists Association, uh, Sabia mentioned earlier, those international organisation, organisations can work with your national organisation to make this happen. Mm -hmm. So let's see uh, what the answer is to that question. Yeah, that's encouraging. That's really, really encouraging. And those countries who haven't got there yet, we're here to help, so to speak. I'm sure you've heard that before. But how about limiting the prescribing of some categories of antimicrobials to certain infection control medical professionals? Is, is that something that you believe could be undertaken? Do um, you feel that's important? And if so, when could that be implemented in your country? Uh, it's something we, we do in Australia. There's some limit to uh, what uh, categories of medications can be prescribed, that is antimicrobial medications, and by whom they can be prescribed, under what circumstances, and to which uh, infections. So is that something that more widely would be appropriate in your country? If so, when do you think that can be implemented? And we've got the answers coming up pretty soon. Again, that's, I think, a, a very encouraging sign that people think that that's something that, that could be implemented and, uh, and put in place. I think this is really important. Can we encourage the use of symptomatic treatments for common viral or self-limiting bacterial infections? Because we know that viral infections, including COVID-19, do not respond to antibiotics. We know that, but how many people do? and what would be appropriate treatments for sore throat, for the common cold, uh, for influenza? How can we raise awareness of this? And how can we encourage the use of symptomatic treatments? Can we do it? When can we do it? I would like to think sooner rather than later. Maybe we need to, to, to get the information uh, that we provide to our, our patients, our healthcare consumers that will come from GRIP, from FIP, from our professional organisations in our own countries to make this happen. And the vast majority of people reckon it can happen pretty much now. That's fantastic. Leonie, I might let you take the next. Uh... Well, we're looking for your feedback. We want you to, to let us know through the, the chat room and the, uh, and the, the Q&A link. We haven't had any questions yet that I can see, but maybe we have. But look, in, in summary, maybe I can just summarise first and then, uh, Leona, you might like to do that too. Um, these are some of the initiatives that, that we've seen that have been suggested in our region, the Western Pacific region, the 37 countries that we represent that we could establish formal antimicrobial stewardship training at the undergraduate level, regular up-to-date postgraduate education, access resource materials. I think that the, the resource materials nicely fits in with that last line there, encourage the use of symptomatic treatment. I think that's really, really important. And they, they, they fit hand in glove there. Um, we need to establish and enforce regulations, and maybe we need to limit the prescribing of some categories of antimicrobials to certain infection control medical professionals or to certain conditions. Um, now, you might have some other initiatives. Leone, do you want to add to that? Leone, we need you to go off mute. Just to ask the last uh, I, I would just like to uh, share to our uh, fellow pharmacists here, John, that uh, among the things that we need to do, among the example initiatives that we are sharing, which we have gathered also from the survey that we have done, regulation, I would agree, would not be very easy. But it is a thing that is not impossible. It's a matter of us showing to our policymakers, to our regulate, uh, legislators, including the public that we're serving, the value that we can deliver to them as a pharmacist. 
because uh, this is an experience that we have in the Philippines. We have right now an executive or order relative to the, the use of antimicrobials from prescribing to dispensing to patients' use. So this is now governed by a national uh, guidelines on how prescribing, how dispensing, and how the use of antimicrobials will happen. And it emanated from an administrative order which was issued by no less than the president. And how did it happen? It's because the pharmacist group conducted a survey, a study, on what, how the incidence of antimicrobial resistance happened and presented the result to the Department of Health and to the president himself. So that was what trigger, trigger, triggered our president to issue an order relative to the, the use of antimicrobial. This is quite a, a serious uh, issue or concern that every pharmacist has to work on. And uh, anything that we can contribute to really make sure that abuse in the use and even overuse in the use of antimicrobial could happen. So we- yeah, yeah, I think slowly, you're absolutely right. But surely, yeah. and things will happen. Now, Sabi has pointed out that the sixth P that, that uh, started off as five P's, now the sixth P framework there, that hexagonal um, graphic, if you like, um, it's, a, it's an enormously important issue that we work with the health ministries in each country. Many countries have already done that, and we at FIP can help you. We really can. Um, yeah. We know that, uh, I, I guess, you know, just, just to digress a little, um, we're all in a roadmap, we hope we are in a, road, a roadmap out of COVID-19, don't we? We know that's important. We, we're trying to get out of lockdown in each of our countries. But I think even more importantly is getting this roadmap to success in antimicrobial resistance. Statistics would indicate that within 30 years, we, we will have 10 million deaths annually from the misuse, inappropriate use, or, or the resistance associated with antibiotics. That's an enormous problem. We know that. So these initiatives that we've outlined tonight, and we want you to, to uh, suggest some others as well. We want you to get into that Q&A box and ask us some questions. We've got some time to, to answer them as best we can. But let's try and address the roadmap for antimicrobial resistance success in the Western Pacific region. We can learn from each other's countries. And we at the national and the organisational, um, international organisational level can help as well. So okay. we want those questions to come in. <laughs> and suggestions. Yes. yes, Jen. Just to reiterate, we are we are uh, really expecting some more uh, recommendations to initiatives that could be done. And just write it in the chat box, and we will take a look. Uh, we will definitely be having that um, and take a look at it. If you haven't already seen it, FIP of course <laughs> has a statement on the pharmacist role in antimicrobial stewardship. So have a look at that. But if you want resource materials to help you in your practice, whether it's in hospital or community practice in pharmacy, uh, there are some fantastic resource materials on the GRIP web website. That's www.grip-initiative.org. Have a look at that, and I think you'll find some great materials there. So together, FIP and GRIP can offer you the resource materials to help you in your practice. Yes, I agree. I agree. There are many that you can find in the website. So, so thank you very much, uh, Leonie and John. I'm going to ask that you ask the last, very last question on the poll to ask mm -hmm. which would be the most important, uh, the top three initiatives that we would like to implement in the near, near future. So if you would ask that, and then I've got a number of questions that I have can pose to you that I've been looking at in the chat as well as in the Q&A. Okay.
Sylvia, so, yeah, these are the questions here. There are three initiatives. The, the three that you think are most important um, for you in, in your country. So we'll have that. Uh, we'll have those answers in a in a little while. It's a little bit more complicated <laughs> than previously, <laughs> but I'm sure you'll you'll manage it. Those those through the top three that that uh, that you think are relevant. Well, there you go. I think they're all important, obviously, um, yes. but. Uh, it looks as though the, the top three are the top three. Um, and that's interesting. Yes. Sevilla, I think it's back to you. Before, before we go back to you, Sevilla, I notice uh, Philip Howard has indicated uh, resources there uh, and they're fantastic. So he's put a link in there for you. Have a look at those. Yeah. Yeah. Some really good stuff. And Thanks. there are many inspiring messages, John, that they are very willing to really start and continue and strengthen what they have currently uh, been doing relative to this issue. And of course, I also would agree with this comment that I, I saw in the chat box that we need to, uh, to involve the public so that uh, they would really understand how antimicrobials are in terms of its proper usage and what precaution to, to, uh, to uh, be and to. So uh, again, uh, experiences that we have really involve the patient groups and the, and the public so that there would be very good reception for the users when we already lay down certain uh, policies relative to the use of antimicrobials. Sabia, just before you, you <laughs> take it back from us, I just wanted to identify something that's come up in the uh, chat box there. Um, pre-winter campaigns. Uh, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I know it's kind of pre-winter in the Northern Hemisphere now. A, a lot of us in the Western Pacific region around the equator or, or in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so we'll be able to be really, really well prepared by looking at to do something in March, April, May next year. Uh, but for those of you in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, now's the time to get cracking on preparing an awareness campaign for this coming winter. So thank you very much. I have a number of questions that I'd like for you to address. A number of them have already been answered in the, in the chat and the Q&A as they've come up. But there are two main areas under which the attendees have in indicated uh, uh, some discussion. The first is regarding partnerships, partnerships between the pharmacist and the prescriber, uh, the, the medical doctor um, and, and the GP, um, as well as uh, partnerships with the ministries of health who would be ultimately responsible for um, implementing the, the, the roadmap for AMR whether by pharmacists or other healthcare professionals. So can I ask the two of you to please just speak to, in the first instance, um, partnerships, and then I'll ask the next question in terms of awareness. Um, okay, well, thank, thanks, Sabria, and, and thank you, Malcolm. Uh, look, I think this is going to vary from country to country and even probably within countries um, locally. Um, I, I would like to think that most pharmacists are really comfortable in meeting with their local GPs. Um, and, and this is an issue that of course affects both professions, um, doctors and pharmacists. And I think together um, we can really make a big difference. I, I think because it's a topical issue uh, and something that uh, may be even more topical in this environment of uh, a, a new viral infection that's affecting the whole of the world, 
I think it's a great opportunity for pharmacists to knock on the door of the local GP and say, uh, hey, Mr. or, or Ms. GP, um, can we have a chat sometime about how you and I address antimicrobial stewardship? I think it's a great opportunity. And I, and I, I would like to think, I'm sure in our local area, we can do it easily. And I, I think most pharmacists could do that. What do you think, Leone? Yeah. Uh, how difficult is it in the Philippines? Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen and Sabia. Yes, partnership is very important because we cannot do this alone. This would require a collaborative effort from everyone who is involved in the management of the antimicrobial uh, use from prescribing to dispensing, even from manufacturing. So it is very important. And the partnership that we need to establish with the government is to have a local support up to the grassroots level because the execution will have to be done in the ground. And if we have the support of the government as a partner, then it would be a little bit easier for us uh, to do it. So it's very important. And uh, to our uh, fellow health professionals like the doctors, yes, uh, as Jan was saying, you can share what you have experienced in the Philippines. It's not easy at the start and even now, but we are slowly coming up with very good partnership programs with our different medical groups, including the infectious disease uh, practitioners. So. Uh, it, it, the, these are things that were seen to be difficult to, to be addressed in the past, but with, uh, with the kind of, of uh, aura the pharmacist is, or with the kind of person how pharmacists would communicate, how uh, she would be able to really establish a very good uh, discussion or communication to forge partnership with any group, I think this can happen. As I've mentioned, if others can, why couldn't pharmacists can? We can do that. We can do it. The uh, next question. Sorry, I'm in, in the interest of time, John. I'm going to take the next question. The next okay. question is related to um, um, engagement of all aspects of society. So we spoke about uh, a top-down approach in terms of government uh, playing a role in addressing AMR, but there's also the bottom-up approach that needs to be taken and engaging with communities um, at, the, at the general public level, at the healthcare professional level, at the policymaker level, et cetera. So we've had a very interesting uh, example from the Philippines in the terms of pharma roadshows, where pharmacists are going to out to the population to in, in, inform and advise them on, on health issues. Um, there's also questions around public awareness campaigns, um, and then uh, there's a third question, which I'll ask after this, but um, when Leonie and, and John, when you do answer the public awareness aspect, please will you bring in the, the uh, World Antibiotic Awareness Week and the fact that FIP, WHO and GRIP will play a role in this and do have materials and resources to assist. Thank you. Please go ahead. Okay. Um, Sabia, the, the question related to adherence too uh, is an issue. I guess it's a, about how we can approach our patients in talking sure. so, so John, about... Now, sorry, John, the adherence issue is the next one. So I'm dealing with partnerships, awareness, and then the last bit is, is a number of questions around adherence. So can we do the um, public awareness aspects first? And then after sure, that, we can sure. answer the Sure, sure, absolutely. Part. Look, I mean, pharmacy has an enormous role to play in public awareness. And you're right to, to, to mention the uh, uh, National uh, Antibiotic Awareness Week. Um, which comes up in November, um, which, as you mentioned, FIP, WHO and GRIP have a really big role to play in that, in that area. And it's something that in every one of our countries, we need to embrace. Um, now's the time to start thinking about what you're going to do uh, for National Antibiotic Awareness Week. Um, and not, not just during that week, but throughout the year uh, in, in, in terms of making our our patients, but also the general community aware of the, the most appropriate use of antibiotics. Okay, thank you, thank you Jen. Okay, uh, uh, Sabi has mentioned the pharma roadshow that we do here in the Philippines. It's actually a strategy that would allow the pharmacies to go to the community so that awareness on how the use of antibiotics and what could be uh, 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 some adverse effects it could bring uh, because of misuse and 
irrational use is done. So the Philippines is doing actually a two-prong awareness campaign and education campaign, educating our service providers, strengthening the competencies that they have as providers, like uh, us, the pharmacists, and educating our uh, health, uh, our 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 clients, our consumers, our users of medicines, on uh, understanding the nature of the medicines that they are using, specifically antimicrobial. And uh, this is actually very well received by people in the communities, would you imagine, for a gathering that we call for mothers, mothers being the buyers of medicines in the family, you would find the fathers coming in and enjoying also the discussion who are bringing in or who put forth a lot of questions relative to use of antimicrobials. So it's very important because no matter how what we do as a policy, as as a practice guideline or requirement at the service provider provider uh, level. If the service uh, recipients, our clients and our patients, wouldn't understand that, it would be very, it would be more difficult on our end to push forward a certain project. So the pharma roadshow is for the pharmacies to go to the communities, and in fact, this is followed through with another project that this team of pharmacists are working on the, the so-called, on, uh, on the work that we do labeled as pharmacists to the barrio or pharmacists to the, to the villages, far-flung villages. So educating and, and, and uh, promoting awareness on rational and responsible use of medicines, antimicrobials very specifically is given a, a due focus. So thank you very much, uh, Leonie. I think in the chat, we have lots of support for uh, working together in partnerships and also lots of support in terms of uh, um, our leadership role as an educator. Um, the one comment I'd like to pick up on is, is uh, from Jennifer Flores, who's, who speaks about communication skills and the need to understand the health literacy levels of the different people that we speak to, and then adjusting the language such that they can understand what we're trying to communicate about the importance of AMR, using antimicrobials uh, carefully. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I agree with Jenny. Jennifer is actually a former chair of, of our board of pharmacy. And thank you, Jenny, for uh, bringing forth that or uh, putting, forth, uh, put, uh, putting forth that question. Yes, it's very important. Like what we do, we have different dialects all over the country. We have to translate materials and we have to give the training in different dialects. Sabia, I think you've frozen up there. Um, so, uh, whilst whilst you're you, you're fine now, I think. Uh, whilst Sabia's um, uh, <coughs> kind of defrosting, um, can I say that uh, one of the, one of the areas um, that I think there was a question related to how we talk to our patients about the need for. Um, antibiotics or otherwise or symptomatic treatment. I think it's a matter of when people come in, uh, often they, they seek our advice in community pharmacy as, as to whether they, they need an antibiotic. Sometimes they've been to the doctor and they've got an antibiotic or they've got a repeat prescription for an antibiotic. I think it's important that we ask them, you know, what kind of symptoms you, do you have? What are the most troublesome symptoms? We know that, that in certain cases, um, um, the, the symptoms of a sore throat or a common cold or the flu, uh, they're self-limiting. Um, they, they may last a week or two weeks or three weeks even, depending on the symptom, but they still don't need antibiotics. We know that if more than likely they're a viral infection, they don't need antibiotics. We know even that most uh, bacterial infections for the upper respiratory tract are self-limiting. They don't need antibiotics. So it's a matter of having a discourse, a discussion, if you like, with your patient, uh, and of course, liaising with your doctor as, as your, your, your local GP um, as to how you're going to handle these kind of uh, um, particular conditions where, where people come to you. Sabia, I think you're, you're online again. 
but on me on mute Sabia. Thank you very much, John. My apologies that I had to, I went offline. So we've had a really, really interesting discussion. Uh, and we thank all of the participants for uh, putting all of their thoughts in the chat. Um, we, we strongly agree with, with partnerships, mobilizing everybody. So we have a whole of society engagement with AMR and ways in which to, to uh, address it. If you'd like to look at the FIP website and the CRIP website, there's a lot of information on the leadership role that the pharmacist can play in every single um, strategic objectives of the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance, and I urge you to have a look at that. Um, and then we also had uh, uh, information or, or discussion around adherence to guidelines and how important guidelines are. And I can't emphasize more the importance of guidelines that become almost healthcare-specific or hospital specific when it comes to antimicrobial use and resistance, because the greater the antimicrobial use, the greater the resistance. And if use characteristics differ in different healthcare facilities, there may be different uh, levels of resistance. So it's really important to become a part of your pharmacy and therapeutics committees and participate in, 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 in deciding what the guidelines should be and how people should adhere to the guidelines. The WHO has also got a guidelines to antimicrobial stewardship. Um, so please have a look at those and see how the pharmacists can become involved. So with that, thank you very much, Leonie and, and John. You were excellent facilitators and we've got lots of very rich information that we'll take forward for the, for the um, uh, global and regional roadmaps. Our next steps um, specifically. So Kathleen Duggan um, announced the FIP AMR Commission. Um, at, at the workshop on the 12th and made mention of the FIP development goal related to antimicrobial stewardship. And so these are the first, these are the two things that will be uh, launched on the week of the 21st of uh, September. And the very first deliverable of the AMR commission will be the regional and global roadmaps for pharmacy that you have contributed to. So we thank you for all of your efforts. Just to go further, Further, um, we have identified in this workshop the key actions and engendered regional commitments to AMR. The roadmap is designed to be an iterative tool, a living document that will act as a compass to guide actions globally, sustaining momentum and evaluating progress in pharmacy, and will be revised annually, culminating in a presentation at the FIP World Congress in 2023, where, special, where a special health summit will be hosted uh, with ministers of health. So we really actually count on you to implement it in your countries and regions. You do have the ability to email us or contact us uh, to give us more ideas and, and information. And we will keep the chat and the Q&A box open uh, for you to fill in different initiatives or ideas uh, until 10 o'clock uh, my time. Um, and then finally, um, if we could just go through to the acknowledgements. So in closing, I would like to acknowledge all of the people who made this possible, Catherine Duggan for the CEO of FIP for advancing the antimicrobial resistance and the antimicrobial stewardship discourses in FIP, Adrian Shepard for his visionary leadership of the Global Respiratory Infection Partnership, and then Jane, Erin, Ashlyn from Chillow Health and Carola and Zuzana and Mila from FIP for your invaluable support. And and our greatest thanks then goes through to all of the participants on the 12th, as well as for this regional workshop, as well as my two co-facilitators, John and Leonie, thank you very, very much. Um, have a great day further, and we really appreciate your input. Thank you. Thanks everyone. And thank, thanks all for listening in and watching. Thank you everyone. And thank you also, I'd like to acknowledge our president of the Western Pacific Pharmaceutical Forum, John Jackson is here with us. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sabia. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye.